бизнеса. Давай с нами. Журнал «Эксперт» — это российский и международный бизнес, общественно-политические процессы, аналитика и прогнозы, рейтинги и интервью. Специальные условия на подписку на сайте expert.ru. «Эксперт» — настоящий деловой журнал. Данные с пользой. Объединяй, анализируй и властвуй. Data with usefulness. The title of the next session is called Divide and Rule. So it's about data science industry, synergies between uh, industry data and trivial processes uh, to, to process an increasing um, the role of culture. We'll discuss technologies of working with data and their integration, business processes of companies, impact of data fusion in client work and cross industry the relevance of these trends with our experts. I'm happy to welcome participants of this discussion. Let's welcome Evgeny Burnaev, professor of the Skaltech Institute of Skaltech Institute of Science and Technology. Vladimir Dashkovsky, head of the Department of Machine Learning of, of Gazprom Bank. Alexander Mamaev. Uh, machine learning and data analysis of wiki. Van Hachetrian, head of, uh, of Azon machine learning department. He'll be with us online. Also, Alexander Koko will be with us online. GLONASS partnership and national technology, national technology, national technological, and the moderator, Alexander Neyman. CEO of Big Data Association. Let's welcome them. Good afternoon. Okay, let me get used to this. Okay, Van Alexander. For, to get started, please let us know that you hear us. Say something in the mic. Hi. Excellent. Alexander, please do the same to make sure that you are with us. We cannot hear you. Try again. So we have some issues with Alexander. Maybe. Okay, now we can hear. Yeah, there you are. It works. Good afternoon. So, so we everybody has been introduced. We are all here, and here is what we are going to talk about today. So, modern startups, these high-tech companies, um, large high-tech companies, they cannot uh, do without in their businesses, even though it's not so much about technologies, but you cannot do without knowing how to work with data. And today's session, it's part of this wonderful, of this wonderful startup villages about what is uh, is, at the, is on the peak of this technology, so working with data in companies. So maybe we'll provide some recommendations, some tips to startups, what they should do, how they should develop, and what they should do, what they shouldn't do. So the first question that I would like to address uh, to all of our speakers, one by one, so let's figure out a uh, list of modern technologies, what it looks like. So we have Lakey, we have clouds, we have uh, data warehouses, data fusion is a new idea, a fusion of data and for them to be used in business. Let's uh, figure this out. And Vladimir, so first of all, the first question goes to you. In the bank, in your bank, what technologies are used, how you differentiate them, and what is primarily at the peak of your attention, at the height of your attention. Thanks for that. 
Keep it closer. So let's uh, start with data fusion, as we understand it. I did a short fall in the last four days. About 30 of my colleagues, when you meet a person and just says, what is data fusion? And many of them say, this is about uh, uniting data, or some of them say, I do not know, it's a current trend. And based on these conversations, I came to these conclusions. So when I first joined Sphere Bank, uh, so data stores you were actively uh, created data from various sources, like from lending and very unstructured data. So you need to uh, structure them and put into storage. Data fusion, from my perspective, is uh, something that is being born currently. And the next level is da data lake. Data lakes uh, already exist. This is your storage. And then on top of that, audio, text, textual documents, PDF documents, and they're proper processed and they're put together with unstructured data to be later used. And data fusion is very similar to data fusion. This is the last level of processing that we work on. Data fusion is when for me it's a cross functional, cross industrial uh, unification of data it's a t and technology of processing data and also digital level of data because data exchange between industries is, uh, is something that I observe. So first data and then there is their processing and legal status. So technology regulation of data so and data itself. So you have the same understanding, uh, understand, uh, Alexander NVK. I would say that any corporation, any ma large business, has a lot of different projects and products, and each one of them is a source of data, of dis disparate data. In every product, every project has different interfaces with other technologies. So it's a zoo of sources. And to bring them all together, to have the same deter determinator, is a difficult task. Yep. So your main task, if I heard you right, is every project works in its own way. So, that, so the data uh, is hard to process because of the technology. Alexei, I would put it this way. It's a problem. I work in several big companies, so this path from building a single storage that aggregates uh, in quality way data from different sources in that ecosystem, uh, our large businesses haven't done it yet. So we're still uh, on that journey. As I see it, that path to standardize that stack, we need to pay closer attention to the paradigm of cloud technologies and cloud computing. So this is a serious global trend for businesses, large corporations like Twitter. Uh, Twitter uses Google Cloud, Netflix, Uber, they use AVS, Amazon, web services. So cloud technologies make it possible to standardize tax and to take it to the next level of treating data from the perspective that applications become more uh, failure resistant, more scalable. Something like that. So something more uh, about technologies and data fusion is about cloud solutions because they're scalable as much as possible. Evgeny, do you have something to add to this agenda that we're discussing today when we talk about technologies? So I have worked a lot with uh, applied tasks like machine learning. So data fusion is uh, uh, not with data lake, but in the last century in the military sector, when you need to uh, evaluate uh, operative situation and you observe multiple objects, flying objects, and so you have different ones, different model observation. You need to understand what is happening. As time passed by in that area, in the military one, 
They develop some stable terminology differently with different levels of fusion of data. And now with new sources of data, with social networks, with a lot of textual uh, text in the internet and with, with new source storages. So application area has expanded. So we want to draw some conclusion about this object by integrating uh, different data. So precision matters because we may do so, we can do the same measurement but with different precision. And also the cost will be different based on that, especially engineering tax in oil and gas. You you can take the same measurement with different methods and costs will be different. So that's just something I wanted to add. But colleagues were right. In fact, stack technologies are being developed in, uh, in with large companies like Yandex or VK. So we add to that methodology. Do you have something to add to that, to this agenda uh, what we, that we discussed? Just a few words. Thanks, Alexei. Colleagues did a good job describing it. I will add only that uh, modern IT companies uh, generate uh, colossal amounts of data at their platform and their services. A lot of operational commercial solutions may not be, uh, may not use their data directly. So data fusion is about transformation and about extraction of uh, data. And imports is growing, of that is growing. It's uh, regardless of the size of your business, whether you're a small shop or e-commerce. Uh, so we, in our company, we talk about uh, simple or maybe more complicated uh, processing methods. So we use them for key business processes and objectives. Thank you. Alexander, do you have something to add? You must be the last to work, so maybe all the best things have been already mentioned. So key things have been mentioned. I just wanted to add to my colleague to what he said. Perhaps uh, terminology should be better defined, but in principle, we're not observing anything new. So, so we're talking about processes, computing. Perhaps there are new computing methods out there, but they're based on mathematics one way or the other. And back in 1988, we saw some successes. Even before that, uh, when a, a, a Buran uh, uh, pilotlessly uh, landed in Baikonur, came back, coming back from space. So those methods had been learned uh, at a serious level. So it's difficult to add to that. Thank you. To summarize the first question that we have discussed today, so data fusion is methodology for data when you bring data together from different sources. As Alexander stated, mathematics is used because you have different data. And business is based on that. And we need A, technologies, and B, data that is collected, and then we bring together and a regulatory a regulation. So that's where we have formulated prob the problem for businesses and for legislators, for the government related to data fusion and data use. So let's take a deeper look at this. How in different areas those issues are resolved. So we talk about a research institute, about banks and social networks, e-commerce and high tech. Uh, Autonet. Uh, so from the real in industry, it's not a B2C business. So to get started, Evgeny, so let's put it to you, this question, it's a general one. In what industry is data fusion is the key trend? In which industries um, are lagging behind? And which ones have not even started to work with data? And what objectives may they may have in relation to with it? First of all, if we talk about industries and sectors, so ahead of the, all of them are industries like those like VK, Yandex, and others, or those who do e-commerce. 
you. Because you use a lot of user data. At the same time, there's data that can be also about uh, products, about locations, and what users are interested in. So it's a difficult computational task, and you can do it and come to some conclusions. And even there, uh, there's organizational issues arise. So colleagues from VK are here. There was a recent case when somebody was had a lawsuit against VK about the use of the te te data fusion technology when on the one hand th there's, this, there's some bank loans and there was a network, social network search. I get them some data from that user profile to improve scoring models and other things for analytics. So if we leave behind uh, their conclusions, but the case was very interesting when we talk about different types of data. So it's been going on for quite some time, as long as such companies exist, since the very beginning. So it's been going. And it was noted properly by a colleague about Buran spacecraft. It was well developed, but it was developing in waves. And now we have a new wave of it. Because they try to digitize a lot of things, like in oil and gas. They're, they use different data. Uh, in their research, seismic, geologic data, and they want to combine it. And, and they know different things about different parts of an oil field, and they will put it together in one model and then populate it with new data as it comes. It's a difficult task. So it's a classical uh, thing in a way, and there are some other areas eroded, uh, related to motorcycle or car building, pilotless driving, it's a clear data fusion because you have different types of sensors. If we talk about the same object, if it's about a car, but sensors are different, and how do you bring them all together, how you unite them so it's a reliable solution? So it's not a trivial uh, task. I can mention some other areas where um, they start thinking uh, later, but considering the current political situation, it becomes more relevant, sustainable development, and all those uh, objectives, uh, meteorology, uh, planning, uh, routes uh, for ships like ice conditions, so Russia is, is being cut off from different sources of data over the last few years, the meteorological station, weather stations in the west, we have them, but to the east, we don't have that many of them. So. It's data fusion in its purest form, but then we need to add a satellite, uh, uh, space imaging data. If we talk about ice conditions, so buoy provide data or sensors from ice ships or uh, icebergs floating in the sea, data from the ships about currents, uh, about their speed, about local weather and global weather. And uh, also data that comes from mathematical modeling. So it is a data fusion as well. So those things uh, become more uh, relevant because of logistical uh, issues. So, But it's about data fusion as well. That's it. So why not work on those tasks? No problem. Uh, there is no issue with that. But it should become a problem. Until it is a problem, nobody does anything about it. But now it, it has become a problem. Hopefully, they'll get involved with it. Why I was talking about this? Because particular things connected to the general state. We are solving it together with uh, KPN and uh, Oceanology Institute. And there is a problem indeed. I've been talking to Ross Atom, colleague, one of the heads of the department. And during the last season, some amount of ships were stuck in Tehmur because there was uh, no understanding what the state of the ice is there, and they had to wait for icebreaker. Yeah, the problems are coming into our lives more and more.
Yes, exactly. So before you have this problem in your life, nothing is going to happen. Okay, then the data is going to be more and problems will be more because uh, they're growing more and more. In fact, I would like to ask a question to Van. Ozone has been working with the data union technologies for a very long time and uh, internal model modeling data as well. Using their own data, external data, maybe, I don't know. Speaking about the tasks, the first obvious type of tasks which is being solved by Ozon. How are you solving them? What barriers are you facing there? Thank you. Yes, after processing and storage of the data, we in Ozone are solving a huge amount of uh, tasks using various technologies important for our marketplace. For example, technologies of uh, AI, so we can list the recommendation systems ranging in the search and catalog, forecasting of the sales and uh, logistics, uh, matching of similar goods on the marketplaces, chatbots, moderation of text and pictures during the onboarding of products on our website. FinTech is uh, rather big and we are sco solving scoring tasks there. We are trying to uh, engage our users who should uh, we try to range our users to give them various discounts, etc. Lots of tasks are appearing due to the necessity to monetize the data during the data fusion process, which bring the business colossal usefulness, which is basically not going to be something we're going to say goodbye to. We're trying to expand this uh, value of data fusion in our business. A little bit more about a couple of cases. Could you please review them? Maybe the most complicated, let's say, when you had some data of, let's say, one nature, second nature, and maybe some intersecting data, and you managed to overcome this problem and to get something useful out of this data, some additional insight, etc., and maybe to evaluate its influence on the efficiency of your business in general. Yeah, Russia is a unique example indeed because compared to the Western countries, we have lots of big players on the marketplaces and uh, in Runet. Thus, every one of them wants to know what is happening among their competitors so from the point of view of data, products, etc. And they are analyzing this information to improve the business yes. values. So you cannot build up the super huge marketplace without knowing what is happening by your side so what assortment does runet have what should be added and as soon as we get this data as soon as we start analyzing it we do understand that something has to be expanded thus we are building up the new categories we we'll understand the market better we see the necessity of adding various uh, products thus we're closing the demands of our end customer <laughs> which makes us even more attractive and it increases the wish of our users to come back to our marketplace and perform the shopping procedures. And what about external things? Speaking about da double data, which you mentioned. So are you parsing so the external sources or what? Yeah, we're working with open source data, which look very raw. We get them in the wrong form. And data fusion is uh, coming into force here, and we have to come up with some ideas how to store this data. Based on what is being processed already, the monetization is doing, being done. So basically the AI, which is automatically solving particular uh, questions for us, where to go, etc. And can you actually tell us how long such projects actually might go from the very moment when you get the raw data until the implementation of some theories? Maybe until the moment when you get this value that has been pro produced to the industrial usage and what team is involved in this for us to understand what is the price of the matter. Yes, stages are in abundance. 
We are delivering the data, we are processing the data, and uh, everything depends on the volume of information. They might take from one to several months to three months. So basically, we have the shopping window with which we can work, and based on it, we can have some conclusions done. Then we have the process of research of the best approach of using this data. The research can be done internally and eternally, but we are trying to solve these problems in two months. And the industrial usage after a successful study takes up to three months. And in the end, we have about six or nine months when business can fully announce that we are using this data on the industrial level. At that we are inviting the developers of informational systems, data scientists, those who are analyzing the data, who are devising the models of uh, AI data analysts, the people who are doing the analysis and forming the end understanding what has been achieved, system analysts who are overseeing the peculiarities of systems and uh, and reliability of the system to for business to function and to use the industrial algorithms properly. That's it, more or less, and the amount of the necessary groups depends on how fast you want to achieve the result. Of course, working with one person, it will take more time, but in general, if you have three or four people in every represented pool, you can solve this problem on this industrial level in half a year or maybe nine months. How many projects are you personally maintaining? I have six such projects, different projects, and the company itself there are dozens of such pro products, more than 50, that's for sure. Thank you, thank you. It sounds like data fusion of a very expensive pleasure, and not that fast. But as we heard, if it is being used on an industrial level, then the result doesn't keep waiting. VK, I think you have even more such teams, so can you actually draw some examples here? How does data fusion look here as well in VK? The same questions from your point of view. From the point of view of large social media, from a large internet service provider, let's call you like this, Okay. Length of the process. Just like Van said, I do agree with him completely. If there is a short-term project where we are convinced that the signs and marks are going to be of good quality, we have shopping windows, we can uh, use them, we have the ready-made infrastructure which we get and the target alternatives are there and we are basically creating predictive models of the machine learning, then okay. Most of the time for every SDS project, this is not about building up models, it's about working with the quality of the data and uh, working on the infrastructure, especially if we're talking about some external customer who wants on-premise solution. There are short-term tasks in this regard, and you have a form product, and the model building takes about a week. And there are long-term projects when this process of cleaning up the data to get the quality data takes up to a year. We have a huge project with Rossetti. They are public shareholding companies, so they are monopolists in the market of transferring of uh, electricity. And we created special 
software for them to predict how the legal entities are going to use particular energy resources. Well, that's quite interesting. Yeah, this is a regular table and signal processing. Because the industry is being digitized and uh, legal entities have special checking machines who, which are providing the data on energy consumption. So there is a lot of things to work on. And the storage is another thing. Before the machine learning, the quality to the, qual the demands to the quality of the data and their consistency and them being stable, etc. So to calculate all the, uh, all the signs, etc. So no such demands ever have existed. That is why the first thing when you are coming to external customer, you have to take care of these things, first of all. In this case, the project might take up to a year. It was a successful project, by the way, yes. It is working in the Volga region, and uh, the teams are going to across our Volga region. And they're checking things according to our program complex. So they are building up the route lists. Thank you. So it looks like the teams of punishers. Yeah, those are almost teams of punishers. Yes, they're riding across the region and uh, switching off the electricity. From the point of view of recommendational systems, probably due to a range of social media leaving the country, let's not call names. What do you think? Will the goals of using data fusion change for you, for example? Do you see any bright future, some perspectives? Of course, we saw new users coming to the social media. We are creating a new line of products. Recommendational systems to personalize ads. Social media has always been doing work in the field of recommendation of content for the users to know what to do in the social media, what to consume, basically. New conditions require to expand this product line. Have you been evaluating any numbers? So how many people came from different other social media? I don't know whether I can announce this or not. Just say many, few, decent, let's say dozens of persons. Oh yeah, sounds rather serious indeed. Thank you. And I have a question here. As a social media, based on the existing data, are you creating some products for the outside usage? Some features? Some features without any personal information. No, we are not sending anything outside. Maybe some scoreboards. Yeah, it's a regular data fusion, actually. So, you know, the methods of uh, learning without data exchange are learning as well. Yeah, the federated learning. Yeah, when there are different signs uh, which are used and iterated. And then independently using the second block. This is the most primitive here. And what about the business analytics? I know that uh, you are doing analytics on tourism. Basically, the demand for such type of data fully anonymous and uh, with the geo layers, something like this. Yes, 
This is the analytics for Prisma. For tourist streams from region to region. Our systems for geolocations are aggregated for each person separately. Ну вот тоже открытый источник OpenStreetMap картографический, который позволяет с геодатой. And there is the map data, which allows to work with geodata in good quality. Сколько у вас команд, так скажем, по разработке продуктов? How many teams do you have? Ну я могу говорить вот за наше подразделение, оно называется Predict, оно настроено. Oh, we have this department called Predict. Создание систем поддержки принятия решений для внешних заказчиков. The, we have this uh, system for the external customers, and it has recommendation products as well. There are 40 people in it, and about a half of it. Разработчики, data scientists, data engineers. Ah, developers, data scientists, the technical experts. А вы внешние данные откуда то берете, или у вас только фьюзит свои данные из различных продуктов? Are you fusing the data from different products? Смотрите, ну как я говорил, вот у ОСМ как источника активно активно используется. Есть еще. Well, OSM is used actively. There is also the Rostat open data. Публикует тоже открытое. Ну, со стараемся. Сбербанк is publishing those open data. We're trying to use the open source data. Yes. Покупки покупки нет. Понятно. А почему? No procurement, no buy. Ну, кажется, что не продают. Not selling. Ну, я бы сказал, что наша ценность, она в DS на экспертизе, в первую очередь. Our price is in DS expertise. So we are the DS consultants. Какие-то данные, да. If you need to. Это стоимость покупки на него переносится. А мы в первую очередь вносим... We as the consultor, we are doing the DS expertise, data engineering, etc. And we live through that, not monetizing some market data. The business model is a bit different. Thank you. Other Alexander. The initiative Autonet has been launched several years ago. Ну, сейчас Александр нам чуть по... The creation по детальнее расскажет. Это как раз uh, data fusion of data fusion of all the vehicle industry. Both the manufacturers, maybe the roads, and maybe the sensors, etc. Параллельно в Европе стартовала... As far as I remember, насколько я помню, это которая GAIA-X... Europe says, uh, has the same incentive, GAIA-X. Также начать собирать данные и вместе анализировать для производительности. Александр, расскажите нам, как... Companies were doing this. Александр, how Autonet was moving across the latest years and what do we have now? And what to expect in the future? Anything to brag about? I'm sure there is. Yes, one of the main tasks of the project. Or the data in Autonet. To accelerate the development of the product, we can see the barriers. The data is fragmented and service providers are fragmented. And the problems, regulatory problems, of the owners of the data. And the modern infrastructure, of course. How they are working together, how they are generating data, who is monetizing them. We are talking about dynamic data, the state of the car, geolocation, physical model, the state of the driver, and it is also about logistics. Out in the market, we have the discussion about the model of using the auto vehicle data, which is generated during different concepts. And concepts are different in China, in the States, in Russia. 
So it's that approach is only being developed. And that data cannot be effectively used for predictive diagnostics or services for venture tech, for car dealers, or logistics companies. So that's how that project was first developed to accelerate uh, data consolidation processes to achieve uh, some critical mass uh, to be able to use AI technologies and to work in different uh, niches, uh, niches for cars. So some standards have been adopted in Russia. Federal law has been discussed on uh, car data usage, but the key thing is uh, when and how car makers protect their position strongly. They don't want to share that in Europe. Um, as they um, develop their uh, data-related legislation and acts, a lot of work is being done gradually to make public uh, car data, but car makers uh, resist that. It's easier in China, but they banned exporting data. All data should be stored on Chinese territory, and uh, government structures ha have access to it. So in the states, it's different in different states. In Russia, as I stated before, so far, that it's an ongoing discussion with producers, with car dealers, with regulators about uh, this regulatory framework and how data can be consolidated. So in a nutshell, if we talk about investments, obviously application was mentioned of uh, pilotless driverless transport. Uh, banned vehicles. It's not only about uh, regulatory barriers. Uh, there are some also technological barriers there. But 100% of modern cars, those are produced now, they're connected cars. And they generate a lot of data. And that data may be extracted from cars, consolidated, processed. Thank you. Alexander, from your perspective, uh, in terms of um, where data belongs, so where that it, legislation is going to take us, and what is your perspective on this? In this case, a uh, human personal mission is to give them a chance to the car owners should uh, make money on the data they generate. So normative framework, a regulatory framework that they develop, we want to protect interests of car owners. And I think uh, it holds the future. And to involve the millions of people in this uh, large data market, if car owners have access and have the tools to monetize the data that they generate, their cars generate, so those connected cars. So we think, so in that market, we can see more active growth as a result if that model is human-centered on the whole. It's going to be a win, even though not all current uh, data distributors are doing that on a paid ba basis. So they may not share it with uh, the data with uh, with the owners of the data, with, with those who generated them. I understand. So the trend is, if your car has sensors, so the information that sensors generate, so the owner uh, should ha owners owns the data, so it's not that you you can get. It's not only kilometers in a speedometer, but also uh, gigabytes of data. So car owners share their data. 
and, and, and they get free services in return, which is a good thing. So they started thinking about people, finally. Yeah. So it's a, a path to monetization. So if you can buy, buy it on different platforms, and if you pay for it, and when dealers come to a service center where the data is consolidated, the history of repairs, etc., and and the car owner doesn't get anything from it. It's a standard situation. Makes sense. Thank you for that. So now let's move to the banking industry. Normally we are more advanced uh, in data fusion because modern banks are not only about loans and transactional uh, services, but modern banks are larger than that. There, there's more uh, business, there are more businesses there. So what are trends in banks in terms of data fusion and machine learning? So where is it going? I was very surprised when I heard from Alexander's. So 40% of my thoughts were shared in terms of money spent on development and also in terms of monetization. It's very similar. Let's move to specific cases. To get started, to better understand more uh, this subject, we need to know the infrastructure. We have geo platform, we have database, we have Hadoop. We have Hadoop. So, fairly large infrastructure and out of beautiful cases. So, when I talk to colleagues, I ask them, what example can be cited with data fusion? So, can we discuss our product with uh, project with HR? So, when we bring together data, so that project took a year. It, it's an ongoing project, it's still running, and it took a lot of time to bring data together. First of all, it's information from questionnaires, from resumes, CVs. So we dealt with a whole range of issues. So like probability of uh, being laid off and the burnout, probability when people are burned, burning out. So when you forecast that thing, so let's say that one is going to have burnout, so what do you do about it? But you need to understand the cause first. So it's a predictive analytics. So let's start with this one. And then you have descriptive analytics. So we know who it is, we know their age, we know uh, where they are and what locations they are, where, in the, where they work. Secondly, we know where they work. Uh, their office, organizational structure, and the clients, if they are connected to each other, so we have a tree, communications, common communications, so, so we have uh, types of data. Then we look, so where they live and how long it takes for them to make it to the work. This is the geo component. And then what happens with competitors? So are there any competitors close to where they live? Maybe or maybe close to where they work. So we put into this melting pot different types of data, graphs, geodata, NLP. We use a text. So sources are different, absolutely different. So no general common criteria. Sometimes we have them, but on top of that, sources haven't been loaded to uh, Hadoop for operations when we talk about years. So it takes uh, about a year. So it took a, lo a long time to integrate sources because not all of them had histories or they were modified. So about um, six to nine months it took to clean the data and understand better their quality about geo, one format. But uh, graph is, graphs are different than table data and textual formats. We have three formats. So data fusion is about bringing together. It's about the smelting pot when, where we put all the data. We melt them, merge them, 
We check for anomalies, and after that, after uh, normalization, we can build uh, row, data rows. And to continue, so if we talk about probability of being fired, so we may have a graph um, that changes. Then we look at the surrounding, how that event may affect uh, the uh, people around that person. And we added features to that graph. So we looked at sym symmetry, and we built the model using table data. And now we test those models to see which one is the best. So this is one example that shows that bringing together different data sets and methodologies helps us to achieve the same goal, which I think is a telling example. And another beautiful and clear slide. So where data fusion works, what can what new things can be uh, got? So this. So uh, background. So this is uh, nothing super like. So we have this uh, mesh of 500 uh, grid, 500 by 500 meters, and. Uh, and so in, in the green area, we have a good check, but in, in the red, it's, uh, it's an okay check. No, so, so, so maybe Kursk, a train station and atrium that has a lot of uh, people, but when you go to the other side, somehow there, you don't see that many people anymore. And in some parts, it's all green. So we have this grid, 500 by 500. We look at the uh, attraction points. So, so what is there? Some roads or something else. And when the new sources are added, we can get a smaller grid from it, like 50 by 50. And by that, for the new model it's not we don't use that large grid anymore but we pre-process that we build a small model when we break it down and we use uh, uh, boundary uh, limits not to have gradient and then we switch to the modeling level so this is a beautiful and understandable example when you bring different together different sources something that you never had before so and what is the variable it's not a variable this is information that we had so we have grid 500 by 500 and the average check is like that this is just an example I exa I don't remember um, so what it stood for that yellow or green what was it age or density of population or average check but then when we have those attraction point we move to a more detailed grid and based on that model and testing, uh, it works much better. So that's work with data. So uh, when we put it into our melting pot and we have out, uh, output, uh, which is also data. Okay, thank you. I wanted, uh, as a moderator, I cannot share it, but can you tell us about the project that we did for development? from the perspective of data fusion as a product for uh, an adjacent uh, sector. <laughs> Tell us. So, so let me start from afar. If you ask this question, data fusion, like we, we if we meet here two years down the road, so what will we will have achieved? First of all, we have a project on big data, on creating sandboxes, cross industrial sandboxes. We prepared aggregated data on the basis of geo layers, and we passed it on to our colleagues. And we saw many subtleties that we had to work with and take to take risks and work with our lawyers whether we can transmit data, pass on data, not client data, but aggregated data. And secondly, security department, would that allow and how can we monetize the data going forward? And from my perspective, that ambitious goal is to, to, to have in two years 
To have a common product that would be helpful, useful for all the participants. We have geodata. Our colleagues have data on. Uh, okay, let me add to this. So the key idea here is that uh, data from adjacent sectors can be monetized, and not only in their respective areas. So we check uh, that with banks, with telecoms, with operators. So jointly for development for major uh, commercial centers for the shopping malls, they have such uh, tech. How, what aggregator should be involved for me to get good human traffic? So they need to get data from adjacent sectors. It's more effective compared to what they have when they use their methodology, statistics, annual statistics, etc., etc. So with one unnamed developer, we are looking at this pilot, and potentially it can be a full reengineering of the planning process for rented areas when you use the data from adjacent sectors. So a bank may have data on transactions, and that can be monetized in an adjacent sector. So then you, we have data fusion when it, several independent players put their data um, in one into one uh, melting pot because they, but normally they don't want to share their uh, data with a non -trust, trusted entity but being an uncommercial organization we ensure that we guarantee that so we run several pilots and in a couple of years and maybe we'll get back here we'll be back here together and we will share you our success story. And what uh, Alexander said, so, <laughs> so users can uh, help to do it. So we talk about insurance, about sure how you sure sure data and that's an interesting idea. Since we started to discuss our bright future, we have this question, where we are going and where we will see ourselves in a couple of years, maybe in three years, at this waterfall, may we meet each other here and we uh, discuss this topic of data that needs to be analyzed and hopefully we will be masters of data, not uh, not the opposite way when data and AI will be our masters. So what we will have achieved by that time, what problems we will have, maybe Alexander can briefly outline it. I would say that we are just in the beginning of this journey. And in fact, uh, we, are, we don't have we uh, don't have enough engineers and specialists. Those who work in ML and those who work in that industry, they aren't used properly. So we have people from Moscow State, from uh, Physical Engineering Institute, from other places, those who knew that spectral breakdown. Instead of using them specifically, we ask them to clean our data. So, okay, I got it. So we. So maybe when we get back together a few years down the road, they can do something more specific. Maybe engineering issues will be dealt with by engineers. And what else? So I started uh, by speaking about cloud technologies, which is a global trend and investments in uh, cloud technologies and computing are equal to investments into traditional infrastructure. And, and um, if we talk about young businesses and startups, for startups it's a great uh, journey to take their infrastructure into the, to the cloud to reduce their capex. Basically the expenditures for infrastructure. This is a more flexible IT. It's uh, 
scalability, its reliability of uh, systems, the decrease of time to market of the product, uh, decrease of the time for development. And I believe that cloud-based technologies are the trend that is going to develop due to the distribution of wideband technologies, faster access to the information and the light technologies of virtualization. So why it actually boomed? Virtual machines were more complicated and virtualization of uh, equipment took up much more technology and now containerization actually turned it all upside down. Yes, of course, we need to understand where we get there. So considering the current sanctions. But okay, let's hope that in three years we will actually be sitting somewhere out there on the clouds. Alexander, the same question to you here. I hope that in a year or two we will manage to push those regulators towards what we want. I hope that at some point we will have some particular standards which will help us to solve this dilemma. Whose data is this? Who is responsible for those? How do you see this development of the projects within the next three years? What are we going to discuss in two, three years? What problems will you be solving next? Starting with the main thing, okay, two, three years, it's not a long-term horizon, of course. I hope that people who are using the cars will understand that the data is a product. And there has to be monetization of the product. And this educational period will be rather fast thanks to the interested participants of the market. We have mentioned uh, the insurance. We call it the fares insurance, when the insurance is uh, done for the travel, the journey, or the parking, basically when the equipment is protected, only when it is used. And we believe that these uh, products on demand are the future. Then a person is going to pay for a particular service when they exactly need it. And in this case, we're talking about the whole revolution of the motor vehicle insurance, which is going to cover up other markets as well. I believe that uh, principally things are not going to change within these several years, but in our markets we are going to overcome this fragmentation of data barrier using regulatory mechanisms to provide them with consolidation means for us to finally see the big data and not the small data as it is right now. Well, we wish you good luck there. So I don't see. Is Van with us? Have you actually heard me? Yes, we have, Alexander. Thank you. I do not see Van. Is he with us? Looks like he left us. Okay. Evgeny, to conclude, we began with military. I'm not doing military, thanks God. Yeah, but of course, the technologies. The idea is rather old and methodology is old, so technologies are new. What to expect in two or three years? I don't know what to expect, actually. I can tell you what we would like to expect. Of course, the ideas are old and the tasks are new. Of course. There are lots of organizational questions we have mentioned for many times already, and I believe that we will finally get out of this gray area more than we have already, because this coupling, this fusion of different data, as it was mentioned by our colleagues, so we don't know who owns it all. And another thing, also linked to this and technological thing, where we should do this fusion? On whose side? Banks' side when they are uploading the data from overall the open source data or the teleoperator or vice versa? Or is there a third party, somewhere, someone like you, who is actually going to boil it in your own boiler and give us the result. This is very important. And I guess that by then, some of the matters are going to be mathematized, algorithmized, and they will be worked through. I'm talking about anonymity here, the matters of malevolent attacks on particular models of the machine learning. And finally, 
скажем так, чтобы вот, ну, security, когда мы... Security? Fusion разных типов данных... Due to fusion of various data, cannot reveal some private information. This is very important. So far, such apps still have those blank spaces. And I really hope that we will improve this. Thank you. And to conclude, we are almost off. We are out of time. The data with benefits. People know how to extract it. We do some success there. But once again, there are lots of problems we still have. We're talking about methodological, technological, and sometimes the data is sometimes scarce. And to unite it, to merge it. So there are different additional secret data, personal data, and it's not clear how to merge them with different other data. So once again, BI, classic BI is working here, but prescriptive analytics is still not on the proper level yet. Somewhere we are, in some places we are where we want to be, and in some other places we still need to work. And in the end, I think that they are owning us and not we are owning them. And sometimes, actually, we don't know who has to own them in the end. These problems have to be solved within the nearest future, that's for sure. Well, basically, our colleagues who are sitting right in front of you are doing this work for many years, and I would like to express my gratitude to them. They are solving these problems. I guess that this is everything we wanted to discuss. If you have any questions, I believe that our colleagues will be glad to answer those. Please raise your hands if you have any questions. It looks like the information was in abundance. Yes. By the end of the day, people got tired and cold. Thank you very much for your attention. Let's hear it to our speakers. See you next time. All the best to you. Thank you very much, dear participants of the final session on the main stage of Startup Village 2022. We express the general informational partners of the conference, Interfax, Rio Novosti, Independent Media, Tech Insider, Izvestia, the official social media, Contacte, the official informational partners, High Tech FM, Bureau 24-7, RTVI, Newsru, Telecentro Astankina, Experts Inc. News. 10th Anniversary International Technological Conference Startup Village is almost over. In these last 10 years, we went through many routes and stages. We are open stage where startups are meeting investors and vendors and futurologists and scientists and representatives of government to discuss the technological trends, ideas, and the breakthrough ideas and solutions. Thank you to all the participants and the guests for being with us. And a separate thank you to all the online viewers of our broadcast next year. We will you, we'll be waiting for you offline in Skolkova. See you next time and all the best to you. Bye.